Hi there, are you a small mod pack author that doesn't really know where to start? The CurseForge upload page looking rather intimidating. I got you! As someone that reviews smaller mod packs and is also an artist, I'm gonna share my top 5 things that make me click on and decide to fully review a mod pack. Stick around to the fourth one at least for some tutorials and to the end for some bonus tips. Also don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts below if you have any other tips for mod authors. I also stream on Twitch so you should check that out. I also have a Discord if you don't want to miss an update from me. Self promo over. First thing is a concise but interesting title and good teaser text. Personally, I'm not a fan of kitchen sink mod packs. So when I'm looking for something to review, one of the first things I judge is the title of the pack and the little about text. You'll want something short, accurate, and interesting. For example, I had a performance mod pack that was meant to also function as a base for filming my videos. I don't maintain this pack anymore, but I called it Better Frames, Better Games, which I think was a pretty good title. If you look on the front page of CurseForge's browsing feature, you can see titles are generally short, simple, and to the point. The teaser text is also short and to the point, pitching the theme and gimmick of the pack in like one or two sentences. Say you've designed a mod pack themed around building. It's like every quality building mod thrown into one. Your teaser text could look like the ultimate building mod pack or build to your heart's content yada 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 yada. Now those things are important especially to get your foot in the door and peak interest and the logo for your pack is also important but don't worry we'll talk about it soon I didn't forget about it. You want to make sure that these are simple concise and interesting but you also want to make sure that they are accurate otherwise you'll lose people as soon as they click on it. Your mod pack's description is also incredibly important. This is what will usually be the deciding factor for installing or not installing the pack. Here you can describe what your mod pack is about, what the progression feels like, and any recommendations you have for the player. You can also let folks know what mods your pack may be incompatible with, such as Optifine if your pack has Oculus. If you need ideas for what to put, you can look at some other mod packs for inspiration. Some of the most common categories I see are an about section, a feature list that show off the core mods that really define the experience, any showcases or videos that you or other people have done within the mod pack describing progression, recommendations regarding settings, or if it should be played in single or multiplayer, known bugs or issues, etc, etc. I also commonly see images and assets included, which is a great idea. If you're going to include them though, you should upload them to the images tab and use that link in order to get them to display properly in CurseForge. Speaking of images, a custom logo will go a long way in pulling people in initially. Not everyone has artistic skills or an eye for design and commissioning an artist can feel impossible in this economy for the average person. So is the answer AI? Absolutely not. Just wanted to say here that any mod pack I see that has AI in its assets is completely dropped from my list of mod packs to review. I know in the past I didn't filter this much, but that's because frankly I didn't pick up on how much AI is being used in this community until my second underrated mod packs video. If you turn to AI, just know that you've cut yourself off from a lot of people that will straight up refuse to install your pack based on that alone, including me. This community is filled with artists. It's a lot more people than you think. And on top of that, it's not just the artists. It's their friends, their family, people that support them and don't want to support the AI models that stole from artists to learn and generate images in the first place. In that case, what's the solution for someone with no artistic experience and no money? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are amazing tools out there like Canva, but the one I want to mention here is Blockbench. Blockbench is a 100% free 3D modeling program and it has a plugin available called Minecraft Title Generator by Ewan Howell. These are some of the assets I made with this plugin and honestly, it completely upped my game with this. You can customize your text, throw a pretty screenshot underneath, and bam, you have a decent logo that stands out among a sea of random photos. Obviously, you can get more creative with it as you learn too. Here, I'll pull up some stuff to show it off. As you can see, I've got my Blockbench here, so in order to install the plugin, you would first go here, you would click Plugins, and then instead Instead of, you see I have it installed, but you would go to available and you would type in Minecraft, type in probably like title generator or Minecraft title generator and it would pop up here for you to install. Then it would pop up as installed and everything and then you're good to go. You should be able to click this little thing here that says Minecraft title, create new Minecraft title and look at all the options you get. You not only can make things like a button, like a GUI thing, you can go over here, see all this, look at that. Doesn't that look awesome? I mean, look at this. There's just so many possibilities and it makes it such high quality. Look at this. So many things. I'm willing to bet a lot of mod packs probably used this to make their title screens. But yeah, you can go ahead and do that. You can type in whatever you want as the actual text. We can just make it sub to Cosmonautic because that's what you should do. And then let's pick, let's pick bubbles, okay? And then you can also choose like tileables, like blocks. You can also choose like gradients, stuff like that. 
but I like these bubbles, right? You can click finish and look, we've got some text right here. Um, obviously this may take a little bit of knowledge on Blockbench, but it's pretty easy to learn. You can just click on this. Um, I didn't change the color or anything, but you can change the color. And then if you hit render, you can also hit this position camera button to go right back on center. You can hit render Minecraft title and it'll render it out and you can, you can either copy or save. If you want to hit copy, you can do that, but you should probably save it into your files. And it's really just as simple as that. It's actually amazing and it's especially amazing when paired with our next segment on menu screens. So a custom made menu screen will go a long way. Once someone has downloaded and launched your pack, it makes it seem extra cool if the menu is customized. You can do this with fancy menu, though it may take a bit of time and some tutorials for sure. Using your knowledge of the Minecraft title generator plugin and Blockbench, you can make some really awesome stuff to make your menu stand out. Recently I did a menu for a friend's mod pack for his birthday and man it wasn't easy sorting out the fancy menu stuff. I 100% recommend locking the menu to a specific GUI scale and making sure you learn how to set the anchor points correctly. Otherwise your stuff might end up looking pretty wonky, especially if people have different display settings. You can also do music too, obviously something that's not copyrighted, but a custom menu screen just looks really awesome when done right. The last major tip is super important to me, especially as someone that reviews mod packs from smaller authors and that's making a discord for the mod pack. If people have issues with your mod pack, they should be able to go there for support or make you aware of any bugs they experience. On top of that, you'll be able to build more of a community feel this way and be able to announce adjustments to the pack or bounce ideas off of folks that like it. I personally love joining discords to check out the community and see how everyone interacts, especially when I'm deciding if I want to do a video on a mod pack or not. I've had to do some bug reports for larger packs too, like recently I found an exploit on one of the mod packs we played on MSMP that allowed me to spawn an infinite amount of any small mob. Of course I used it for good, who wouldn't want a horrifying amount of lobsters all named Larry spawned all over their base? Well, too bad because it happened to three people. I totally wasn't involved. And that's my major tips and tricks for improving a mod pack pretty much instantly. A few extra little things I'd like to mention are including screenshots of your pack in the images tab, including some quality of life mods such as controlling, zoomify, etc. that a lot of players add into packs if they aren't already in there. And please make sure you try to do your best to optimize. Simply adding entity calling can make a whole world of a difference. If you want to go the extra mile, including a server side pack for people like me who host modded servers would be wonderful, but it's absolutely not necessary. I know it can be very time consuming. That's pretty much it from me. Thank you to ARCS for being a channel member and remember to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any other tips for mod pack authors that might be struggling a bit, feel free to leave them below. Sorry if I sound a little odd on this recording. It is about 3am and I'm very tired. Thank you for watching. You have a great day today. Bye bye.